Devin Pike with the Dallas International Film Festival. Once again, an amazing slate of music films here at the festival, both narrative and documentary. And the Texas competition this year, thank you a lot, tells the story of a truly down-on-his-luck producer with one last-ditch effort to save his career by managing his estranged father as a client. Um, really rich story, phenomenal love letter to Austin musicians. The director, Matt Muir, is here. First off, Matt, thanks for bringing this film to the festival, and welcome to Dallas, man. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Um, I'm, I'm curious as to your approach for the film. Did you look at it as, this is a way I can tell a really intimate uh, father and son dynamic and have a lot of backstory into it, or did the music portion of it come first for you? Um, it was always uh, more of a vehicle for our actor, Blake. Um, we met at grad school at UT and became friends, and he was in my thesis film years ago. And he's just a really talented actor, and I wanted to write something for him. And I had this kernel of an idea of the music manager in the Austin music scene, who is maybe representing different kind of performers. And um, I saw James Hand play at this little honky-tonk in Austin called Ginny's whenever I was first starting on the script. And then right away, the thought of having James in the film playing a fictionalized version of himself was just really exciting. And the thought of having him play against Blake uh, and making it this kind of intimate uh, father-son story was really exciting so that's essentially how it started. I'm curious when you had the two of them in a room for the first time what the dynamic was between the two. Um, it was pretty exciting. I, As soon as I had this idea I called Blake and I said look this guy up, listen to his music, you know just kind of like read up on him because I'm putting I'm writing him into the movie and hopefully he'll say yes and be a great actor and agree to do it <laughs> for no money. <laughs> That should be a problem, right? That'll work out. Always. It's never an issue at all. Yeah, and then um, Blake did research him, listen to Jane's music, and then, as I suspected right away, he called me back and he's like, this guy's incredible. We have to meet this guy and, like, charm him and, you know, convince him and bribe him to be in our movie uh, in any way. Um, so then Blake, who is a stage actor in New York, flew down for a screen test with James because we didn't know if James could act. Um, if you know if he would freeze up on camera, he was into the movie and the idea of making the movie. Um, so our producer Chris Olson uh, drove with Blake uh, out to the set. Uh, sorry, out to James's house with me to shoot a screen test. And just that first screen test with James, he was just so kind of like generous and thoughtful and got the story right away and was so comfortable on camera that it was it was pretty exciting after that. We knew he was going to be great on screen and um, is such a terrific presence that, yeah, we were all pretty excited. Was there a plan B in place if James ultimately said, this isn't something I'm interested in, where either you find another musician or even... I think worse, get an actor who maybe knows a little bit of music enough to be able to carry it on camera? That's a good question. Uh, we had that discussion and it was either kind of James is going to be in the movie or the movie doesn't really work. Um, that was a big part for us is uh, casting musicians who would play their own music on stage, record it live. So it was like an authentic, um, realistic performance uh, instead of like an actor that could maybe be passable as a musician and could maybe like film, uh, sing to like a sync track or something like that that we could film. That was never really of any interest to us. So it was always either we get James or the movie doesn't actually work and we'll go do something else. You mentioned uh, the other Austin musicians as well. There, I mean, there are a lot of musicians who have been in the, the scene there for decades and it, they're almost unsung heroes of the scene because they they never seem to break out of that orbit of Austin and San Antonio and maybe as far north as Greens Hall and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, when you were starting to put the film together, did you have like a hit list of people who you, I really want to grab this musician for even just a background scene, if nothing else? Um, not really. I think... Um my main goal was to get my friends hundred visions in the movie they 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 play the winterman the fictional band in the movie uh and play their own music in the film so uh much like james i was writing parts for them and the plan was for always for them to always be the band in the film um and again if that wouldn't have worked i'm not sure if the movie 
would have happened because I was writing for their voice and their music and I'm just like writing out, you know, 100 Visions plays this song on stage <laughs> or, you know, the radio station DJ hits play on a 100 Visions song and it is our, you know, sequence, transitional sequence. So, you know, totally amateur stuff on my part, but think, you know, thankfully it worked out. <laughs> Do you know how many filmmakers are gnashing their teeth right now going, how dare all this work for you? Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I'm curious what the plans are for the film because it's a really great character study and the interplay between James and Blake is phenomenal. Are you looking at um, a distribution deal for it or is it going to see a lot of festival life and then live in Austin? What's the plan for it? Uh, yeah, luckily we just... Um, signed a distribution agreement with Gravitas Ventures, so it's available on June 3rd. Um, yeah, it'll be on VOD outlets and iTunes on June 3rd, and people can see it, buy a DVD, um, all on June 3rd. So yeah, we're really excited about that. I hate asking that question because you never, you can always see the pang of regret on the filmic, or the right. anguish on the person's face. Yeah, so. you see the panic setting in. And exactly. Yeah, I don't have the panicky <laughs> answer where I have to sound like <laughs> things are really happening. Yeah, we were lucky enough to Show it to Gravitas and they really enjoyed it. Yeah, so they're going to put it out uh, pretty quickly. So we're excited about it. You had a red carpet moment for the, the film last night. Packed house in the screening. What was the Q&A like for you last night? It was so great. I, our lead actor, uh, Blake, is from Dallas. So um, a lot of family were there and they were really supportive. And um, also, you know, the Dallas community is so great. So just people that had no connection to the film but had maybe read the synopsis or knew of, you know, Dallas' reputation for bringing in great films. They just came um, and we're really supportive and yeah, people, you know, and having James there was great. James was at the Q and A and, um, it's a really fun experience for people to see James performance. And then he just kind of like walks down and everyone's kind of shocked that he's there and, um, is just, uh, he's just kind of the same person, you know, and in the Q and A, he's just very sweet and thoughtful and we'll just hang around and, uh, talk with everyone about the role and the movie and his music uh, after the screening. It was it was a lot of fun. Is do you get the sense that he might actually start pursuing film a little bit more now? I think that he will. I mean, our casting director for the film has already called him in for different films to read for different films. So, you know, I think his joke is uh, as long as he writes a sequel where he can play the exact same character, uh, he'll be great in it. But um, <laughs> but yeah, he's just such a natural performer. He's been, you know, he's been playing music on stage since he was like 12 or 13 years old. So uh, he's no dummy. He gets it. And, and I think he really enjoyed the experience. And yeah, I think he'll, I think he'll be in other films in the future. The film is Thank You A Lot, one of the phenomenal music flicks here at the festival. And you get to see, if you're not lucky enough, because the, the film sold out. If you don't have a ticket, Sorry. However, June, <laughs> look for it on VOD on your favorite provider. Matt, thank you so much for bringing this film to, to the Dallas International Film Festival. And thanks a lot for coming in. We really yeah. appreciate it. Thanks for having me.